1856, he set up this organization right here, the Phoenix National Literary Society, which was not, like it sounds, a book club. It was a very violent revolutionary group. O'Donovan Rossa was embittered by the plight of the Irish during the Great Famine of the 1840s, an event which had done a lot of damage to his family. He blamed it on the British government. He said that the government were, and I quote, worse than all of the demons of hell. Not a man to pull his punches, was O'Donovan Rossa. So in 1856, he set up this organisation and he commenced a dynamite campaign. He orchestrated the destruction of buildings all over London and Liverpool. He was eventually arrested and exiled to America. He died on Staten Island in New York in June 1915. His funeral, held here in Glasnevin Cemetery on the 1st of August 1915, was a propaganda coup for the Irish volunteers. It, it, um, it was organised by a man called Thomas Clark, who was later executed after the events of the Easter Rising. It was attended by between 30 to 35,000 people. There were movie cameras present at the event on the Boland family crypt, which you can see right over here behind you. And um, top, this is also the place where Porrick Pierce gave one of the most famous speeches in Irish history. Now, Thomas Clark asked him to do so. He knew that Pierce was a complete unknown. He was a poet and an Irish teacher, but he did still have a tremendous talent for public speaking. So Pierce readily agreed to that suggestion. He said, I can do a very nice speech indeed, but how far do you want me to go? How will I take this? And Clark replied, go as far as you need to. Throw caution to the wind, make it as hot as hell. And in fact, it was downright incendiary, ladies and gentlemen. So if you'd like to cast your minds now, cast your minds back about a hundred years, it is a you're in a crowd of tens of thousands of people. <coughs> it is a blistering hot August day. That last part might require an, a, a bit of imagination. <laughs> a surfeit of imagination, given the current conditions, but please do try it. And Porrick Pierce, a man you have never heard of, a man you have never even seen, has just stepped out of the crowd and is about to deliver what will become the most famous speech in Irish history. So, ladies and gentlemen, your undivided attention, if you please. It has seemed right <clears throat> before we turn away from this place where we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Rossa, that one amongst us should, in the name of all, speak the praises of this valiant man and endeavour to formulate the thoughts and the hopes that are in us as we stand around his grave. And if there is anything that makes it fitting that I, rather than some other, I, rather than one of the grey-haired men who were young with him and who shared in his labours and in his sufferings, <coughs> should speak, it is, perhaps, that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation who have been rebaptized in the Fenian faith and who have accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian programme. I propose to you, then, that here, by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows. Here, by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of spirit, as belong to O'Donovan Rossi. Deliberately here, we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself, in the dock, Irishmen of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty are bound together and must henceforth stand together in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition of that freedom. It is Tone's definition. It is Mitchell's definition. It is Ross's definition. Let no one blaspheme the cause served by the dead generations of Ireland by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave today not in sadness but rather in exaltation of spirit that it has been given to us and we come thus into so close a communion with this brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. But Jonathan Ross was splendid in the proud manhood of him, splendid in the heroic grace of him, splendid 
in the Gaelic strength and truth and clarity of him. And all that splendor and pride and strength was compatible with the humility and the simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all that was olden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland. A holiness and a simplicity of patriotism of an Ono oh Growney or a Michael O'Cleary. The clear, true eyes of this man who, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland as we today would surely have her. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. And so in closer <coughs> spiritual communion with him today than ever before or perhaps ever again. And in close spiritual communion with those of his day, living and dead, who suffered with him in English prisons and in a communion of spirit with their own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today. And speaking on their behalf as well as our own, we here dedicate to Ireland our love and to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, a place sacred to the dead where men should speak with all charity and all restraint. But I hold it to be a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it. To hate evil, to hate untruth, and to hate oppression, and by hating them, to strive to overcome them. Our foes are wise and weary and strong, but wise, weary, and strong as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God who ripens in the hearts of young men, the seed sown by the young men of former generations, just as the seed sown by the men of 65 and 67 are coming to their miraculous ripenings today. Rulers and defenders of realms must needs be wary if they're to guard against these processes. For from death springs life, and from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of this realm have worked well in secret and in the open they think that they have pacified ireland they think that they have intimidated half of us and purchased the other half they think that they have foreseen everything think that they have provided against everything but the fools the fools the fools they have left us, our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland, unfree, shall never be at peace. The cinema, nine months and two days after he gave that speech, Gordon Pierce was dead. He had been executed by firing squad in the Stonebreaker's yard in Kilmainham Jail on the 3rd of May, 1960. And so, ladies and gentlemen, we shall divide up into our various groups again. Anybody with a yellow lanyard, you're gonna be sticking with Paddy over here. Anybody with a purple <laughs> lanyard,